Hi, my name is Fabian. Uh, this is my second video for my project from your constituents. Uh, my first one um, was to Senator Tom Cotton, um, and I was discussing my, discur my concerns about the immigration um, laws that may or may not come to pass. Um, and for this video, I plan on uh, reaching out to my Senator uh, John Bozeman and discuss my concerns with the new American Health Care Act that has passed the House. I am uh, totally aware that there are two sides to every story and I'm open and willing to hearing both sides. Um, at this point, I just want to voice my concerns from the research that I've done. Um, and I do want to open up this video also with um, a gratefulness, um, some gratitude to my country. Um, before the administration change, I had felt very comfortable and happy um, with how things were going in my country. But clearly there are a lot of Americans that weren't having the same experience and their voices definitely deserve to be heard. Um, and their concerns addressed. At this point, though, with the administration, I feel that more people's concerns are becoming concerns more than they're being addressed. So um, I really want to encourage um, other Americans to make videos, post them to whatever social media platform makes sense to you. Um, and be involved in whatever way makes sense to you. If that's, you know, signing a petition, if that's going to a protest, making a video, or maybe just having a friendly conversation with your neighbor. Whatever getting political means to you is something I highly suggest every American getting um, comfortable with because we all are in this together. Um, right now, um, I would like to talk to my senator, John Bozeman. Hi, Ms. Bozeman. I am seriously concerned with some of the uh, additions and repeals of the original Health Care Act that we had. And with all this research that I've been doing, I actually didn't know it wasn't called Obamacare. I mean, I knew it wasn't called Obamacare, but I didn't know um, that it was actually called the uh, Patient Protection and Affordable Health Care Act. Um, I think people have been leading, leaving out that patient protection part um, maybe to make people feel less comfortable with our health care system. Um, but I do really want people to know that the bill that was passed, 906 pages of it, um, I found, uh, was really centered on helping all of America, most Americans that they could, um, to receive the health care benefits that they deserve. Now, there's not some things that need to change. Um, I think everybody knew that out of the gate, that things need to be modified. Um, but the modifications that have been suggested in this new American Health Care Act I feel are a serious affront um, to actually caring for our, our Americans. Um, so Mr. Bozeman, one thing I did notice on your website that I was really happy with um, was that you did want to keep a few things um, from the, uh, you know, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Um, those things, you know, being, you know, children being able to stay on their, their parents' health care uh, for longer um, and people not being disqualified for insurance because of pre-qualifying conditions. Um, so thank you for keeping that in there. I, I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, now what that means exactly um, in fine print I feel like may not be as translated uh, as clearly to um, people such as myself because you cannot extend health care to 
everyone, um, especially those with pre-existing conditions, if you are allowing the states to have a choice to um, say, no, we're not going to have those guidelines. So as, again, I, I know I probably use this terminology a lot in my first video as I understand it, um, but as I understand it, um, the states are going to have a waiver that allows them to say that they're not going to go by the pre-existing conditions laws. I, I guess I'm just, I'm really foggy on that. Um, because while on your website it says that you want flexibility, choice, portability, fairness, um, if a state is allowed a waiver to not have the minimum health care requirements, then how does that give everybody um, the flexibility, choice, fairness, all of that stuff? So those two ideas don't really line up. Um, the other issue that I'm having, and this is a really a big one, is that Planned Parenthood is being specifically targeted because of personal beliefs. Now, there is a separation of church and state. I do believe that you know, if you have a personal religious belief, you are you are so right to have that. You can have that all day long. Um, but when it interferes with other people's beliefs and other people's care, that becomes an issue. Planned Parenthood does a lot for our communities all over America, and abortions have never been paid for by federal with federal money. Um, so for our government to attack an organization that truly does bring so many services to communities in need, uh, that right there is completely unacceptable. By giving your personal opinion on how this company should not be allowed to be, um, let's say company, they're, they're a nonprofit, so get, having Planned Parenthood targeted specifically in a bill for healthcare, I'm completely against. I, I, it doesn't matter how you feel about abortion at this point. I think going after a nonprofit is just completely and an unreasonable. It's it's. I can't find the words. I'll be honest with you. It's late at night. And I can't find the words. Um, now, as it as it goes for other issues and things that I'm trying to work through. Um, health insurers um, are the one who make the cost of this stuff based on the markets that they're in and their, you know, demographic, um, which, you know, I'm sure is a whole lot of, you know, numbers that I can't wrap my head around. Um, but health insurers are going to increase premiums for 30 per, by 30% the first year for people who have not have coverage for 60 consecutive days. That seems like quite a punishment. 30% is quite an increase. I don't know where that money's going exactly except for, I guess you're saying, you know, if they've already got a condition. Um, but what if they don't? Where does that money go? Do they get it back? Are they reimbursed if they didn't have any conditions or any medical issues come up for the first year? I don't, you know, that's not made clear, of course, and maybe that's something that will become clear later on. Um, but at this point, it just, that's just silly. Um, I think also um, with your elimination, and this is, this probably should have been my first one that I discussed, um, but with the elimination of the Prevention and Public Health Fund, um, that's completely unacceptable. And Mr. Bozeman, I'm really sorry that you're supporting something that helps so many Americans. Um, I went and did my own research to figure out what exactly the Prevention and Public Health Fund does. Um, it funds things like Alzheimer's research and, you know, small communities who need um, help with their health care. And it also helps with immunizations. Um, so you're getting rid of public health programs that truly do benefit all of Americans and why you're not keeping that in there is beyond me. Um, I don't know who's making money on all of this, but I have a feeling the insurance companies are doing just fine. Um, it's the American people that need to be helped, not the insurance companies. So 
perhaps you should turn your focus around a bit to the insurance companies to see, hey, where can we work together and make this beneficial for you so you can still make your incredible salary, but you're also not taking every single dime that you know every elderly person or every nursing mom. One of the programs for the Prevention and Public Health Fund is helping mothers breastfeed. And as a mother who is completely supportive of breastfeeding, I think for you to take those services away and not support breastfeeding in hospitals is completely unresponsible. Unresponsible. Anything to do with children and, and making sure they have a better life and a better future or helping mothers, taking away that funding, I feel it just breaks my heart. Um, the vaccinations too, like we want our children to be vaccinated, at least, you know, a lot of us do. And I've gone through the whole thing myself where do I want my kid vaccinated or not? Um, but having public health care for vaccinations and having that taken away where people have to make sure they do that on their own, that's a health care situation that you don't want to end up in where people have, where we have all these illnesses that come back because children aren't getting vaccinated because their parents can't afford to. I, you know, I know that if you, if you sat and thought about that for a second, you'd be like, oh, that doesn't make sense either. Um, gosh, there's just, there's honestly so much to talk about, Mr. Bozeman, that I, I don't want to take up all of your time. I'm trying to keep my videos short and sweet. Um, but what I do ask of you, because I mean, I don't have a solution for this stuff. It's really big. And when I saw it was 908 pages for the healthcare act that we have now, or 906, um, it's a big situation. This is not something that should be just done overnight. And how it passed, how this new healthcare act passed the house in such a short period of time makes me uncomfortable because it does make me feel like people are pushing things through quicker than they should. So, Mr. Rosemary, I ask you to not rush through this. Please take your time. And if you see that more Americans are going to be left without health care, even if it's 10% of the population, that's too much. There, there is a way to make this work. There is a way to do this. Humans are incredible individuals. We're the only creatures on the planet that can work together on such a high scale. And I know that if you guys got together and really did the work for Americans, not for the insurance companies, not for the people who are going to give you good kickbacks, but for every individual American, over 300 million of us, then I think that you guys could figure something out. I really appreciate your time. I hope that I too can hear from you through letters or videos back. Um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.